I'm Alejandra Campoverde. I'm a women's health advocate. And in 2019, I partnered with the Vassar Center for BRCA to co-found Latinx and BRCA. Breast cancer has been a constant in my family for as long as I can remember. I was barely born when my great grandmother died from breast cancer. My grandmother, who was like my second mom, died when I was a teenager from breast cancer. My mom had breast cancer and thankfully survived when I was in my 20s. And in my 30s, two of my aunts had breast cancer. So this has been a drumbeat that we've had to deal with. It has been really, really difficult, painful, destructive. And I always kind of figured in the back of my mind, put two and two together, that this was something that I'd probably have to deal with in my life too. But it wasn't until 2013 when I found out that I was BRCA positive that you know it all came together and I understood that this was in many ways almost an inevitability for me. So I made the decision at that point that I was going to have a preventative double mastectomy in the future. I had talked to my doctor and we had decided the right time to do it based on when my mom developed breast cancer. So in 2018, I went forward and I had what I thought was a preventative double mastectomy. Turns out there was a plot twist, which was six days after my mastectomy, when the tissue that was routinely tested came back from pathology, we found out that I actually had unknowingly already been developing breast cancer. And so because of the proactive action that I had taken, I basically, the way I kind of see it is I beat breast cancer before I even knew I had it, which was I didn't have to do any further treatment. And thankfully, because of the surgery I had already done, I was cancer free. So in 2013, I saw a news article and it was talking about this breast cancer gene is what they were calling it. It was BRCA. And because I had had so much of a family history of breast cancer, I thought, okay, well, I know it's something hereditary, but maybe this is gonna be where I finally get my answer. And so I was actually really excited to test. At the time in 2013, tests were very, very expensive. It was mostly out of pocket and it was only a blood test that was available. So I went and I asked my gynecologist to give me a BRCA test. And when it came back positive, Frankly, I really wasn't that surprised. It was really devastating. At the same time, I felt this really strange kind of connectivity with the other women in my family because I finally had figured out what it has been that's been plaguing the women in my family for generations. And frankly, because of pursuing a test, many different women in my family went ahead and did the same. Well, on top of those two facts, Latinas are also more commonly diagnosed at advanced stages of breast cancer, and that's because of a lot of different socioeconomic factors, access to health care, lower mammogram rates. But one thing that a lot of folks don't realize is that Latinas also have the second highest prevalence of BRCA mutations after Ashkenazi Jews. And so this is a population that could really benefit from higher awareness, from more access to resources. But when I was going around and I was looking for resources as someone who had the mutation myself prior to my surgery, I couldn't find anything that was really targeted towards our community. And I also couldn't find Spanish language materials anywhere. anywhere. As a Mexican American woman born and raised in LA by an immigrant single mother, where Spanish, Spanish was our primary language in the home. And so I always kind of keep an eye out for inclusivity also in language. And I really couldn't find anything. And so that was something where I really thought that we could move the needle. Partnering with the Baxter Center was really critical because as a leading center in BRCA research, there was so much knowledge there that the Latino community could benefit from. So Latinx and BRCA is a campaign to raise awareness, provide education and resources, and build support for the U.S. Latino community. And how it is for spreading this awareness is creating educational materials. Also, finding genetic counselors that are Spanish language speakers is really critical, you know, especially when you want people to feel comfortable having these conversations and engaging with genetic testing. There's obviously a lot of questions, and to be able to engage with a genetic counselor in your native tongue is also really key. One of the most 
powerful parts of this experience for me was seeing how gaining this information for myself rippled through my family. And I think that's something, especially as young people with breast cancer mutations or who are just maybe more on top of our health and our preventive screen, that a role that we can play with our families is really, really powerful. So I kind of kicked off a domino effect of genetic testing within my family. And when I found out my, my BRCA mutation, and then basically arranged for my entire family to be able to take these tests. Anyone who wanted, I was like, I'll send you a test, I'll send you a test. And so when we started realizing that person after person in my family started coming up positive as well, they had the opportunity to start thinking about their own preventive surgeries. So I, most women in my family had already had breast cancer and breast surgeries by the time they took these tests. But as we all know, BRCA also affects your ovarian cancer risk so my, both my mother and one of my aunts have now had their ovaries removed preventively in order to, um, as risk reducing surgeries, thanks to this information. When I think about the fact that they could have prevented ovarian cancer, which as we know is very hard to detect and very deadly, I mean, that also makes this whole experience um, a lot more meaningful. And I think that as young people in the Latino community, that is a, a role we can take in not only helping ourselves save our own lives, but potentially save the lives of our family. So I really wanna encourage folks in our community to see this as not only preventive action that they can take, again, to advocate for themselves, but this is something for us to do for our abuelitas and our tias and everyone in our family. We are our own best health advocates and in our community especially, we are our family's own best health advocates.